Taste of Life, it's a, a question that uh, can have many answers, but for now it's a very interesting project uh, that uh, we're very happy to discuss with the General Manager of Serbia, Las and Cyprus, Mr. Uh, Ziad Mata, which I thank you very much for your time, thank you so much. and uh, to see what it is about. So let's start and see what is this Taste of Life, these 20 stories, the book and the movie. It's quite a story, I would say, Taste of Life. Uh, I cannot tell you how the project started, but I can tell you that it's been one year where all the Serviela's team are involved in preparing this project. We knew two things, and then one thing led to another. We knew that the voice of the patient deserves to be carried to the largest scope possible of people. These experiences need to be heard. And the second thing, that the patients want to talk about their stories. So when we realized this, we said, let's listen to them. We didn't know that if the project will be called Taste of Life, but their stories gave a different taste to their lives and to our lives. We discovered things that we didn't expect to find. We thought that we'll be finding stories about sadness, about anxiety, about all what we call negative emotions, and that was true. It's normal. We are facing cancer here. But that wasn't the whole story. What we, what we were able to discover was that all what began by anxiety and sadness ended up with hope and glory and the triumph against this disease. And these stories with this triumph deserve to be told and we're very proud to launch today A Taste of Life, a project of a book and a movie at the same time. What is the main message of the Taste of Life project that the people that are watching now this interview should uh, keep? I would say the first message is that you are not alone. When we are facing a crisis, imagine an individual not realizing he or she is a patient yet, to whom it is told, you have cancer. We know that some don't like to hear or use that word. They say that disease at some extent. You are not alone. It happens elsewhere. It's all around us. I cannot think of one person around me today who didn't face cancer through a friend, a family member, or an acquaintance that he, she knows. You are not alone. This happens, and this can be faced by the support of the people around you, by the support of experts, and by the love that you find from your entourage. And that's very important. You need to talk about it. And if there is one message we keep from A Taste of Life, let's talk about it, let's share, because this is how we fight it together. So when you imagine this uh, project in the very beginning, would you uh, imagine that it would go so far? Uh, could you share with us some insights of this, uh, this uh, idea? I cannot say that I thought we'll reach this far, but I'm very happy with the team of Servia Hellas that it was possible to get here. The way it began, it began by collecting stories, as you, as you realized. It's the content of these stories, it's the philanthropist of these stories, with the synergy with the Servia Hellas team that led us where we are today. When we think what is the objective of having a book called Taste of Life, I think that retrospectively when we analyze the situation, we realized that that was the best way to beat cancer twice. Because the minute you are informed that you have this disease, the first question is, how much time do I have left? It's all a matter of time. The philanthropists of these stories were successful in beating cancer by using the time factor. They were here and they are still here. And the beauty of having a book, if we think, when did we have the first writings in humanity? 5,500 years ago. The Kish tablet that is in Mesopotamia. It's still there, and it will remain here after we leave this planet. So we believe by documenting these stories in the book, we defy time, and this is how the philanthropists are beating cancer a second time, not only once. It seems that the uh, Taste of Life uh, is a cross-functional project, embracing uh, all your uh, CSR commitments and uh, creating value for all your stakeholders, for patients, for uh, communities, for your people and your partners. How do you feel about uh, that and what return do you expect, if any? When we talk about cross-functional projects, let me talk first about the internal team in Servielas. I cannot think of one person who is not involved in the project. The project is being launched now and I'm very grateful to all my colleagues who prepared the content, who worked on the editing, on the design, who co-helped the director of the movie in creating this beautiful work who informed about it and ensures that there's a participation in the launch. So it's really a full teamwork at this level. What do we expect from it? Our return on investment is measured by only one thing, the message to be heard. Because from the beginning, the whole objective was 
to carry the voice of the patient to the largest scope possible, and we believe this is the best way to do it. On the launch evening of A Taste of Life, and especially with all what happens after, including this interview with you. Did you and your team take any lessons uh, learned uh, out of this uh, project, if uh, any, and uh, what are the next steps? This is the kind of uh, life experiences that cannot leave you indifferent. Okay? I, I believe that we are different people after this year of working together. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is a disease that cannot leave you indifferent because it's all around us, it is there. By just discovering the life stories of the philanthropist, I cannot describe to you the emotional dimension we're going through from the first script that we got, then working on it over and over again, then watching the different draft versions of the movies. So every time we're all living this experience, but what I can tell you that there's nothing more bounding than that. When you work with your team on such projects, the team is something else. I don't know if we can be just a routine or normal team or something else. We are the something else today. We are the team that worked on a taste of life. I think we, uh, we cover a lot uh, this project and uh, I want to take this opportunity to ask a few things about uh, Sevier Las and what is the footprint um, uh, of your company to the patients, to the society and to the Greek economy? The biggest impact we can do, this is our message, this is our mission. If I allow me to start with Greece first. Greece is one of the most wonderful countries ever. I'm not saying this because I'm Greece. Greece made a big difference to me as a person, to my family, and I'm delighted that I have the experience to live it with my Greek colleagues for sure. We believe that uh, every project that we were introducing was meeting specific criteria mainly. Does it make a difference to patients? If the answer is yes, we continue. Is there a follow-up that can help other patients elsewhere? If the answer is yes, we continue and we go on. Allow me just to give you an example about something that we have done more than a year ago. It's a project on colonoscopy. Now, this is a topic as taboo as cancer itself. If we ask around us, there are criteria from a certain age. You have to go for the colonoscopy screening test. And the beauty of this test, that it is a test that can treat also the polyps that are found in the medical terms. What we realize is that we have the mission to carry the awareness on colorectal cancer by supporting, or I would say motivating colonoscopy to the widest eligible individuals ever. And we realize that around us, within our team members, we don't do that. So how can we talk about something that we didn't do ourselves? And one year ago, we brought a bus and we went all together, the eligible individuals for colonoscopy, to do a colonoscopy test on the same day all together. I'm talking about more than 25 people who went there. And to our surprise, there were three findings. One of them was supposed very likely to evolve toward a nasty disease one year after. And we believe that the mission was served, the purpose was served, because that life was saved. So if everybody behaves the same way, I'm sure that the footprint will go beyond the expectations that we all have. I believe our audience will find uh, the project Taste of Life as uh, interesting as we did. Thank you so much for your time and for this interview. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.